This is Radio Health Journal. I'm Nancy Benson. This week, synesthesia, a word that means blending of senses in ancient Greek, a result of cross-wiring in the brain. If you are gasping for air, I feel it in my body. If you're having a panic attack, I feel it in my body. And that's something that happens all the time with everyone I see. Synesthesia, when Radio Health Journal returns. I'm Reed Pence, the producer and host of Radio Health Journal. If you like listening to Radio Health Journal, you'll also like our sister show, Viewpoints, which covers a wide array of topics, from education to history to the environment. Here's a preview of what they're covering this week on Viewpoints. This week on Viewpoints. It's one of those things that I still focus on to this day, like what kind of person am I trying to be? What kind of impact am I trying to have on others? How do I want people to remember me? The importance of having someone in your corner rooting for you to succeed. Then... I've seen curse words on the inside of a lip. I don't know if somebody was mad at their dentist. Dr. Eric Bernstein is an expert in laser tattoo removal and has seen just about every tattoo out there. I'm Marty Peterson. And I'm Gary Price. These stories in-depth this week on your public affairs magazine, Viewpoints. Listen to Radio Health Journal and Viewpoints on your favorite radio station. And subscribe and listen anytime on Apple Podcasts, Google Play, and Spotify. Also, follow us on Instagram and Twitter at Radio Health Journal. Some people are more empathetic than others. They're simply more tuned in to the feelings of other people and seem to be able to walk in their shoes without even thinking about it. Dr. Joel Salinas is like that, and then some. He's a neurologist at Massachusetts General Hospital who knows exactly what other people are feeling. If you are gasping for air, I feel it in my body. If you're having a panic attack, I feel it in my body. And that's something that happens all the time with everyone I see. Salinas has what's called synesthesia, a word that means blending of senses in ancient Greek, a result of cross-wiring in the brain. Salinas's version is known as mirror-touch synesthesia, with his vision and touch centers merged. He writes about it in his book Mirror Touch, Notes from a Doctor Who Can Feel Your Pain. The vision part of our brain and the touch part of our brain will both activate when we see other people either moving or being touched or in pain. And this happens without us knowing. And this almost kind of creates like a 3D kind of virtual reality simulation of the people around us. Selena says everybody's brain has a mirroring network. It's just that his is very large and active. You may be familiar with that activity if you were seeing someone playing football and suddenly get tackled all of a sudden or someone riding a bicycle and suddenly falling over and hitting their face. That cringe that you get, that is kind of essentially part of that mirror network coming very active. So you feel as if it happened to you. Selena says this all happens without thinking. He's been this way as long as he can remember and was surprised to learn that other people aren't the same way. I was kind of immersed in the mirrored contortions of the people that I was seeing on television. So like if I'm watching the Roadrunner cartoon, Roadrunner sticks out his tongue, I feel like my tongue is sticking out. If I see Wiley Coyote get hit by a truck, I feel like I'm hit by a truck. And it really was only until medical school, that first year of medical school, that I learned that synesthesia was even a thing, let alone that my sensory world was so different compared to other people. However, it's not as if Salinas is completely alone. He says about 2% of people have mirror touch synesthesia to some degree, and about 4% have one of the other forms of synesthesia. Salinas has some of those kinds, too. Someone with synesthesia, known as a synesthete, may see colors and letters and numbers or experience flavors with sounds or sounds with texture and all sorts of kind of unexpected types of combinations. For me, for example, one form of synesthesia that I have, this letter color synesthesia, because of that, the word cat The letter C is black, the letter A is red, and the letter T is red orange. And all of them kind of come together as the word cat, where it's almost like a cloud of black with red puffs and red orange puffs. It's totally automatic, and it's just kind of a part of the hardwiring of my brain. Imaging studies of people with synesthesia essentially show that these people have more wiring between brain cells that are located in different parts of the sense areas of the brain. So someone who experiences color with sound, for example, the sound would enter their ear. The hearing part of their brain would show as active or fire. 
And then also the vision part, kind of creating this experience of color with sound. As you might expect, many people with synesthesia become artists and musicians. Colors and sounds speak to them in ways the rest of us don't understand. And since other people's bodies speak to Salinas, it makes sense that he became a doctor. He says that sometimes it's helpful in making diagnoses. For example, a woman who was unable to speak and was fighting her nurses in the hospital. Salinas was called in to give her medication to calm her down. And then there's this other kind of marriage feeling that I feel that I can't shake. And that's the feeling of my chest rising and falling faster than my own chest. It's like I'm having a hard time keeping up with that rate of the mirroring breathing. And then I also feel very subtle, almost negligible feeling of my shoulder muscles activating. And specifically, the shoulder muscles are called the accessory muscles of respiration, which usually only happen when someone is short of breath. So I end up taking a chance and trusting my body, trusting my mirror to synesthesia, and I recommend a special test, and the results come back, and it turns out she has blood clots in her lungs. She wasn't really fighting because she was angry. She was literally fighting for air, and without my mirror to synesthesia, I'm not sure that I would have been able to catch that as early as I did. But sometimes this abundance of empathy becomes too much, as it was the first time Selena saw a patient die when he was in medical school. We run into this waiting room where this man is lying on the floor, and someone's already begun to do compressions on his chest. And as they're intubating him and doing these chest compressions, I feel as if someone is doing compressions on my chest, like my back is on the linoleum. I feel the sharp sensation of a breathing tube slid down the back of my throat. And with each artificial breath, I feel as if my chest is kind of inflating and deflating. And as he died, there was this kind of emptying kind of feeling. I I described it before as kind of like if you've been sitting in a room with an air conditioner for hours and then suddenly the air conditioner just stops, there's this kind of eerie silence. And for me, it's like all these mirrored sensations suddenly disappear and all I'm left with is kind of this very disconcerting kind of feeling as if I had died myself. I essentially have to will myself to breathe. Then Salinas ran to the nearest bathroom and threw up. Since then, he's tried to expose himself to other difficult situations so he can control them. Then he grounds himself through distraction. I'll kind of bring all of my attention to the feeling of my tongue in my mouth or my toes in my socks or just removing whatever kind of sensory information is affecting me, which if I'm looking at somebody who's suffering in pain or it's in the middle of an emergency and I need to really focus, I will not really focus on the person's experience, but look at something that doesn't have a face or doesn't look like it has emotion. So that could be like a sleeve or a collar and really just yeah, bring myself, kind of really ground myself. Selena says he's not really unique. Everyone's brain has a mirroring network, and it's possible to enhance our empathy by steadily concentrating on the feelings of others rather than ourselves. How different will the world be if we didn't just think about what it's like to be in other people's shoes, but also feel what it's like to be in other people's shoes, to then reason through that experience and respond from a truer, more enduring place of compassion and kindness. You can find out more about Dr. Joel Salinas and his book, Mirror Touch, through links on our website, radiohealthjournal.net. I'm Nancy Benson. Radio Health Journal returns in just a moment. If you or someone you know is struggling with addiction, please call this toll-free number right now. 800-279-0419. That's 800-279-0419. By calling your addiction team, you're taking the first steps to recovery. Don't fight addiction alone. Their advisors are ready to take your call. Your future is still a bright place. The help you need could be one call away. 800-279-0419. That's 800-279-0419. This call is completely confidential. And if you have private insurance, there could be little to no cost to you. Even if you've already been to treatment, give us a call. There is no need to let addiction ruin your life. Take the first step now. Call your addiction team at 800-279-0419. That's 800-279-0419. Make the free call now. 800-279-0419. Your addiction team is a third-party advertiser for various treatment centers and placement networks. Individual results will vary. Visit youraddictionteam.com terms for more information. 
Paid non-attorney spokesperson paid for by the Sentinel Group. Attention military vets and current soldiers who serve between 2002 to 2016. Have you or a loved one suffered hearing loss or tinnitus after serving or while serving in the U.S. Armed Forces? You may be entitled to compensation. 3M, the manufacturer of earplugs made for combat, recently paid the government $9.1 million to settle a false claims act case for knowingly selling these defective earplugs for over a decade. Specifically, the United States argued that the manufacturer knew their earplugs were too short for proper insertion into users' ears and that the earplugs could loosen and therefore didn't perform properly or reduce noise the way they should have. If you or a loved one suffered hearing loss or tinnitus after serving or while serving in the U.S. Armed Forces, you need to choose the right legal team that has the experience, support staff, and resources to seek the most compensation for your injuries. Call the Sentinel Group now for more information and a free case review. Call 800-655-6458. 800-655-6458. That's 800-655-6458. Thank you for listening to Radio Health Journal, a production of MediaTrax Communications. If you enjoyed this broadcast, please support our show by subscribing, sharing it with a friend, and leaving a review on Apple Podcasts. You can find more Radio Health Journal stories about health, science, and technology on Apple Podcasts, Google Play, Spotify, and RadioHealthJournal.net. Also, follow us on Instagram and Twitter at Radio Health Journal. Coming up next week on Radio Health Journal. Here we have the dental community pitted against a public health community that's worried about health risks of water fluoridation and potential adverse effects on the developing brain or other vulnerable populations. Can prenatal fluoride lower IQ? Then trypophobia, the fear of clustered holes. I do refer to it as the most common phobia you've never heard of. All that and more on Radio Health Journal.